Eric, it's such a delight to see you after all of, it's been years. Yes, it has been. Good to see you, sir. It's really good to see you. Um, now, before you were, we're going to talk about blueprints. We're going to talk about your wonderful illustrations and blueprints. But you came on to Mythbusters as a producer, as a, as a, as a researcher and producer. You were one of our longest running associate producers. That's right. Talk to me where you came from. You came from, we worked together at ILM. That's right. Uh, and I left ILM for a short time. And then Linda Wolkovich reached out to people that we, we know to say that you were looking for some help for an upcoming show. No, but what, tell me exactly what you were doing for ILM. Because this, cool, this is a cool job. Yeah, I worked in production services in the purchasing department. And we had to find weird stuff all the time for the model shop. Uh, sometimes it was vulture feathers. Sometimes it was, uh, you know, some kind of arcane item. Yeah. And usually we would need a lot of it and we'd need it today or yesterday. Right, right. Yeah. So when you like read in a magazine about, honey, I shrunk the kids and they made the insect hairs out of this really esoteric plastic, you'd be the one they'd call to go find them that esoteric plastic. That's right. Yeah. And then have to convince someone to produce it for us very quickly and ship it very quickly. Yeah. How, what do you do to interview for a job like that? How do they find out that you, because those skills of being able to f not just research and go find out where something's available, but actually obtain it and receive it, there's a specialized set of skills. Yeah, well, in the old days, we used to talk on the phone a lot more than we do now. And <laughs> yeah. once you hear someone's voice, you can kind of like, kind of modulate yourself so that you can get onto their their wavelength. Yeah. And so some people are, they're very cautious and I can kind of, try to be cautious with them. Yeah. Or if they're very gregarious, I'll try to be very highly enthused right, uh, right. by whatever they have to say. And so it's just uh, making a relationship with that person on the other end of the line. To, to, in the interview, did they give you a list of weird crap to find while they watched you research it? No, oh, no. God, that darn, yeah. that sounds like a really fun <laughs> job. No, they just throw you into, into the, the wolves. Yep. Yep. So Linda calls you, you come over to Mythbusters. What was your impression of the show as you were arriving? What did you know about it? I didn't know much. I think I had caught an episode. I think that the, the pilot episodes had gone on to air just shortly before that. Yeah. Um, and it just looked like a crazy crew of people. Like the, the people in charge were, were brilliant and weird. Um, so uh, I, I just thought, oh, I'll, I'll give it a try. I'll see if this works out. I'm not sure if this is for me or not. But I think one of the first things I did was get a, um, a boom lift. We wanted to do boom lift catapult. Oh my god! Uh, boom, and lifts, boom lifts are the, the 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 bucket lift that's on a big extended arm. They're the worst things in the world. They're so awful to be in. Yeah, yeah. And you know, we we didn't have a budget or anything. Like we can't go out and buy a boom lift. Right, but we needed to destroy one. We needed to destroy one. And I found a guy who was just willing to give us a boom lift. And from that moment on, I realized, oh. You can find free stuff in this world if you look. <laughs> if you look, and uh, yeah, and then went from there. Now we were crackling along, making the show. Jamie and I, mostly me, drawing blueprints for the front of the show, which became such a key part of the visual style. Um, I can't quite remember exactly which point you started drawing them all the time. But there was a moment when it made it seemed weird to us that we were drawing these when we had you are also a published comic book artist. That's right. Yeah. I I can't remember when that all happened either, because both you and Jamie were doing it, and then Carrie Tory and Grant were also doing mm -hmm, some of the mm -hmm. blueprint drawings. And at some point, yeah, someone said, Eric's a comic book artist. Why doesn't he do all of these? <laughs> and my reaction was I, I've got work to do, guys. <laughs> uh, you know, I was busy. And so it was suddenly I had a lot more work to do. And it's not only my time, but I had to find a cameraman to, to shoot it with me. Because and the drawing was a live drawing. It's a live drawing. You need a guy behind you on your shoulder. And you also uh, need to find a place to shoot these things. Right. And, you know, space was at a premium back at M5. Um, but we made it work. And I think at first, I. I kept them simple, but then after a while, I was like, oh, why not just try to do something weird? And I think that the first one I did that uh, I was happy with was Western myths, because I just drew a, a cowboy on a horse. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it was fun. 
Like it didn't look like any of the other blueprint drawings. Yours and Jamie's were always very technical. Like mm-hmm. there are a lot mm-hmm. of like A, B, C, yeah, 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 yeah. And it looked like tools and things that had been exploded apart, and you can see how they're put together. Mine was just cartoons. Oh, I, we we need a cowboy. <laughs> so I'm ours were cartoons too. It was just the comic style I was always replicating was that pop mid century popular mechanics. Oh, I love that stuff. right of yeah. like the kitchen shelf blown out into yeah. all of its pieces so that you can see how they go exactly. together. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that leads me, I think, to our first question. Thomas Essen says, uh, to what extent were the blueprint drawings planned out ahead of filming? Uh, did you have a rough draft or did you work off the cuff or with a verbal description or photo reference? Which is it? He wants to know. <laughs> um, it would depend on how much time I had. Sometimes it was just like I'd grab a cameraman and we had some space and we had some time and I'd just go for it. Um, but if I knew I had a little bit of time to think about it, I would do these little drafted pieces, a, a sketch beforehand. Yeah. Um, and that actually made it a lot better, a lot easier if, if I sketched it out beforehand, because then it's muscle memory a little bit yeah, once yeah. I get to the blueprint page. It is really tough when your job figures out you have a totally other skill that is useful to them. I, I had one about prototyping uh, graphic design stuff, and I was working for a toy company, and I didn't tell them for months that I could do the prototyping <laughs> they needed because I didn't want to do right, it. Right, right. Uh, but I'm curious over the time that you did the blueprints, if it became satisfying and oh, yeah. a really fun job. Yeah, yeah, it was. And um, people seemed to respond to it, too. Like, suddenly... Um, it became a thing. Like uh, people could see these drawings that were being made, yeah. and they were really uh, um, amazed by seeing a conjuring of a drawing. Like because right. it, it's all sped yeah. up, and so it seems to come out of nowhere. Um, it's and magic. I think the thing that I loved about bringing you in one was that I didn't have to draw any more blueprints. <laughs> but really, that's because uh, I'm not very. I'm not adept at illustration. I'm adept at using illustration for communication. But you really brought a point of view to it. Uh, so I hope you felt like you were able to explore that point of yeah, view as you yeah. as you went. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, and I, I appreciated it more and more as as I went on and, oh, good. and became more comfortable with it. And uh, you know, tried to take more pride in it to make it look pretty cool. Yeah. If I could, if even I had time. Even despite them yanking you from phone calls, trying right. to find ping pong yeah. balls. <laughs> um, Eric, says Josh M.M., M., uh, when you think back to the variety of blueprints, was there one that was especially hard to complete or that you wished you had m- more time to work on? The blueprints always sucked me in and made the show so much better. Thanks for your contribution. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks. Um, all of them, I wish that I had more time. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, the universal axiom is yeah, you wish you yeah, had a little more time. Yeah. But if I did have time, um, there was one that I did that I put a lot of detail into. It was a flying guillotine. Um, oh, and so yeah. I, I drew Carrie, Tori, and Grant, and they all had like various gu- guillotines that they're throwing in the blueprint drawing. Um, I, I had a lot of time for that. And like, I think I took an hour making this, this drawing. That's lovely. Yeah. Um, Adam8016 wants to know, um, was there a blueprint drawing that you were really stumped on? Here's another yeah. that you really didn't know how to complete. There's a lot of them that I'd be stumped <laughs> on, and but I developed a technique. If I didn't know how to draw something, like, for example, liquid nitrogen. Right. Um, <laughs> how am I? So I would just do lettering um, and draw, like, I would draw out the word liquid nitrogen and have like snow and icicles hanging from the letters. Yeah. So that's a way to get around something. If I don't know how to draw liquid nitrogen, at least do the lettering. No, and once you were doing the lettering, man, it I found like it felt like you were developing your own rat fink style for Mythbusters. That's yeah. what it felt like Big Daddy Kane kind of graphics. I <laughs> yeah. just really dug Love that. that guy. Yeah. Dude, I know. Thank you so much for watching that video. Your support allows us to make more of this great content. If you'd like to help us on a deeper level, even head over to tested-store.com because we've got stickers. Who doesn't love stickers? Our anime-inspired tested logo in Japanese. Follow the process, not the plan. It's not a process. It's not a problem to solve. It's a process to manage other aphorisms that have come from my mouth. Um, And we have just made a full set of our demerit badges in sticker form so you can cover your toolbox with all of your screw-ups and celebrate it with other makers. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.